Hey folks, Lester and Jamie here, and uh, we want to welcome you to a Sanctuary Sunday. This is our once a week State of the Union, if you will, of both of the properties, where we can tell you all the good, the bad, and the ugly. I'm thinking there's only one thing that was pretty ugly this week, and I'm a little bit embarrassed to talk about it, but I think I need to get it off my chest. And sometimes whenever you talk about things, it makes it easier to begin to accept and move forward. Would you agree with that? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm just going to wait a couple of seconds because no one from Facebook is here yet. <laughs> and that normally happens. We uh, are blessed to have found um, an app that lets us bring all of our pages together because there are many folks that don't. Just wait Did I make, ruin something? Way to make a scene and draw all the attention off of me. I was onto so you, thirsty. Jamie. I'm sorry. <laughs> There's Facebook. Hey, Facebook. Welcome to our Sanctuary Sunday. I was just saying that um, this is kind of our State of the Union address, if you will. Uh, it's our weekly sit down. We get to talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly. And I was also saying before you came in that there's really only one thing that I think was ugly this week. And I'm going to go ahead and just get it out there, get it off my chest. So you all know that last weekend was Jamie and my, it was our fifth year anniversary. And we celebrated, we did something for Jamie, something for me. Jamie's also a, a gift giver. And so I, I, I like to do actions as gifts. I'm not really a person to necessarily give a gift per se, but I like to give gifts in form of actions. Uh, am, am I am I lying here? No, am I lying? Even the kids' Christmas gifts are like doable things. So yeah, that's that's your style. So um, little did I realize that. Well, let me just back up a little bit. So you know that we have Ben, uh, my nephew Ben, who we am, we actually were only going to offer him summertime employment, but that summer work has extended on into the fall and uh, getting close to the winter and ben is actually enjoying what he's doing here he comes by a few times a week and he opens all of our packages he helps us open and sort all of our packages and he'll normally take the things that say i'm a survivor and he'll put them where they belong you know oatmeal with the oatmeal feeds with the feeds he'll take all of jamie's stuff and hand it off to her uh usually on the front porch it's like it's usually a porch drop off and then stuff to Lester, he'll put in my truck so I can open it. I like to open my stuff on a video if I can. But uh, I noticed there was something on the porch that was to I'm a survivor. And I'm like, okay, so what is this? So I open it up and it's this amazing little candle. And it says, you are the best thing. You are the best thing I've ever found on the internet. So I thought it was really cute. You're the best thing I've ever found on the internet. Let me type that over here because you are the best thing I've ever found on the internet. So this is exactly there. You are the best thing I've ever found on the internet. And I'm like, Ben, has Jamie seen this yet? And Ben's like, no. And I'm like, okay, good. So I took it and I'm embarrassed to say this, but I tried to re-gift this. I tried to wrap it in aluminum foil, which is, that's just kind of my thing. I wrap all of my gifts in aluminum foil. And I was going to let Jamie know that, hey, I got you a gift. Problem is, there was this, the kind lady who sent this also has Jamie's email. And so she emails Jamie and says, hey, have you received this candle that I sent? I'm just worried that it may have gotten stolen from your from our mail drop. Oh, it got stolen. All right. But not from the mail drop. And Jamie's like, what what kind of candle was it? And the lady goes, it's she describes it in great detail. She goes, it's a it's, it's in a black tin and it says you're the best thing that's ever happened or I've ever found on the Internet. And uh, all of a sudden, my. Yeah, my my. Uh, is it called my ploy? Yeah, my ploy was discovered. 
Uh, and so I had to come clean and say, okay, you know what? Sorry. But I'll just go back to doing acts of service, which mm -hmm. was the, the normal way of me gift giving. But uh, no, uh, we appreciate you guys for being so kind. That's really sweet. It is sweet. And uh, we also are, you know, you're the best thing that's ever happened to us on the internet, obviously. Mm -hmm. And so for someone to tell us that, that's that's a real that's a real kind thing to say. I'm all for the record. I'm all about the re-gifting, and like I've never been sad if someone re-gifted any of my gifts or if I've been given a re-gift. But that one, that one was a little extreme. Because you have to receive the gift first to be able to then re-gift it, I think. That's well, how it works. Well, in a way, we did receive the gift, and I did re-gift it. We. Let me, let me, let me say this. <laughs> if the kind lady had not said anything, you was just you were just thinking I was the sweetest guy ever. You were just thinking I was the sweetest guy ever. Jamie's not a flower kind of person. She doesn't like flowers. And we go out and eat at least once a week. So going taking her to eat is really nothing more than our regular date night anyway. I mean, in all honesty, what? You want to say something? Go ahead. I just know that I would have never, you wouldn't have stepped foot in a store that sold those. So like, that's not, that's like, I would have seen right through it regardless. I just know. I just know. They don't sell them at Tractor Supply. Okay. That's really how it would have boiled down to. You have, well, you have holes in your story here, Morrow. Any, anywho, <laughs> it was a beautiful gift and we appreciate it. So thank you very much. And uh, so fine. It wasn't from me, but it, it was to us. Which is really sweet. Which is sweet. And I haven't smelled it yet. It smells good. So it's not vanilla. Mm -mm, it's like gardenia. I, I don't have, know what that is. I have no, no, I mean, I guess it's some kind of a plant. Gardenia, garden, gardenia. It's a flower. So it's a flower. Anyway, uh, so yeah, so thank you for sending that. Thank you all for all the things that you send yes. us. We don't ask you, and we don't want you to ever go out of your way to gift us with stuff. And uh, I, this is funny. Penny, nice try, Lester. <laughs> hey, hold on a second. Lazy Lester in all caps, which means you're screaming at me. And uh, keep digging, Lester, keep digging. Hey, it was all in fun, but uh, the candle was received, and we don't actually, we can't go by and make videos of every single gift that you bless us with. Guys, you understand how that makes us feel uncomfortable. And uh, I also, like, I feel guilty that I, I can't write a thank you email or card to every single person who sent something, and I feel terrible about it. I I don't know what to do to solve that. Like we used to make gifts and goodies video, but it made people feel like less because they couldn't contribute. So we stopped that. Now I have this stack that just keeps growing and growing and growing that I need to get to. And it's like, I need to employ a full-time person to help me do some of these things. And then it doesn't mean the same as it would if I wrote it. And now I'm just spinning. So thank you. Yeah, That's no the best way we can say it is thank you. Yeah, just thank you. So we're very blessed. And uh, for all of the things we receive, for the animals, especially. Um, and then when y'all go by and do things for us, we, we appreciate that. But like we always say, please spend your money on yourself first. Make sure you oh and your gosh, family yes. are taken care of and you have all of your needs met before you give to others. So listen, in saying, um, I don't really know how to segue off of that onto other news, but... Um, I wanted to share some Hurricane Harvey stuff. So Jamie and I have been together for five years, and you know that we met because of the horrific natural disaster in Hurricane Harvey. And a lot of that came from the videos that I was making and putting out that talked about, you know, things that we were the process of rebuilding your lives after a natural disaster. And you know that last week we talked about, Jamie, there's a fly and there it's are all two. over me. I know. I don't know what I've done to attract flies because I've actually showered. I have a brand new, this is brand Some, Many people new. asked if you would stand up, by the way. Oh, well, you can't see my shorts because they're camouflaged. So I look nothing. I don't match top and bottom, but this is my top. I think that's cute. It is cute. It's I think cute. That's well, lovely. piggy pie. Yeah. And, um. It's it's complimentary to the chicken one. You were supposed to wear the pig, and I was wearing the chicken, and then you wore the chicken, and you know. 
I Fail. messed everything up. You screwed it all up, babe. Well, um, anyway, it's a beautiful gift. Uh, thank you for that, too. Listen, uh, but I was talking about Hurricane Harvey, and you know that we met a young lady last week who was just in the rebuilding process from Hurricane Fiona. And we found a way to pay our blessing forward by trying trying to find a way to help her out of a her situation not there's no way you can ever get someone out of their situation but just sometimes anyway let me stop talking and show you a video that she sent this morning and then this here brought back just a flood of memories of my own that i'll share with you guys that i don't think i've ever shared with you guys before so let's start her video Lester, hey jamie um, I just wanted to send you this video because I find it easier to speak rather than to um, text message. Um, but I just wanted to let you guys know that we are two months out from Fiona and we are in fact home. We uh, have rebuilt. Um, it took a long time, but I want to let you know that We've been so fortunate with our friends and our family and our community, and we have had clothing donated, um, some furniture donated, and just and a, so blessed for everybody in our lives who has helped us, and including you guys. Um, we are still going through things, and um, I'm going to try not to get emotional here, but we are still... Um, parting with things as you would know from Hurricane Harvey and having to bury everything. So I'm going to pause it right there. And uh, uh, I appreciate her saying that because, you know, when she sent that, it reminded me of long lost videos that I had that. Um, and what she was talking about is they're taking time going through things the same way we had to go through things, trying to salvage whatever you could and everything else got buried. So let me place for you guys a video from five years ago before we were, I'm a survivor, before we ever met each other and show you a little bit about what she's talking about. Right there. I would like to welcome you all to a little place called Plum Grove, Texas. Plum Grove has been my home my entire 40 years. I was born and raised. Now, what I would like you to notice is what's on the side of the road. And so as I drove, I'm not going to show you the entire video because it was probably 20 minutes of a drive of me going through the entire city of Plum Grove. And like I said, guys, there was not a home that was spared. But what you see out here on the road is what I'm sure you've seen in every uh, hurricane flooded video. This is all of your home possessions. These are all of the larger possessions that you had to get out of your house because of the mold the mildew they were in fact they, they were they're ruined they're no good and so as I'm, I'm only going to show a short snippet over here but the reason that i made this video back five years ago is just kind of to show you guys an example of what every person who was affected had to go by and do in sorting out all of the things that were at one point what made up your home you know, your couch, your love seat, your entertainment center, your, you know, all of your furnishings that had gotten flooded and at this point were, were no good. Raised here, it's the same place that my dad was born and raised and the same place that his dad was born and raised. I mean, so that right there, these are, these are friends of ours. These are neighbors down the road. And you can just see that they, when they empty out in their entire home, that's all of the things from their pantry all of the things from their bedrooms there were i mean think about it real wood was salvageable but anything with particle board you know the difference oh, yeah. and all that yeah. so anything that was particle board and things that could not get wet had to be brought out and thrown out look at my sticker on my on my truck I know. you see how long ago that was i was uh, looking i was like hey it's not even expired I'm it's before him uh, all right Plum Grove anyway. is a small town so I will like any of the small town like anywhere here. USA falls right there. Just that guys, that is the way that Plum Grove looked as you drove up and down any street in the little town of Plum Grove. That's what you saw. 
And so what we had to do, what we were told to do is take all of your possessions out into as close as you could to the road. And then FEMA, that's our federal emergency management folks, were going to send crews to help clean up and dispose of all of those things. Now, uh, what they would do if you had, how do I say this? If you, if you were able to, and if they, and if you had a place to bury those things, they would go by and dig through whatever could be buried. And they would actually come out with a, a track hoe and dig a very large hole and just bring a bulldozer and push all of those things into those holes. And so all of us who live way off the road, you know, we're, our homes are a quarter of a mile off the main road. It wasn't feasible to carry all of our stuff down to the road and try to find a place to stack it. So they asked us to put our things into the front yard as close to an area that they could dig as possible. And so when they came out finally and dug all of our holes and buried all of our stuff, they always made sure was there was nothing that was going to be buried that was not biodegradable. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, you know, you couldn't bury electronics. You couldn't bury batteries. You know what I mean by that. But wood things that were, were biodegradable, they would actually bury. And so, so I have a direct connection when she brought that up this morning and talked about how they're go, still going through stuff, throwing things out that can't be salvaged, that can't be cleaned up. They, um, and so I, I have a, just, it, it made a direct connection to me. And sometimes when we have these direct connections, that means a whole lot more. So Jamie's in here saying like, can we move on with a lot? No, this is I'm like not. going I'm nowhere. I'm paying attention. I'm listening and reading comments. Are you reading comments? Yeah. So I'm not sure what any comments are saying. I don't have my glasses. And they're going by you know, so I just fast. I think that people have, I mean, people who have experienced other natural disasters, whether it's fire or flood or tornado um, and other hurricanes and, and, you know, just big life events like that are talking about how traumatic it is to have to sit there and sort through your life and, and, you know, I'm blessed to not have had to do that on as big of a scale. The closest experience I have is Imelda and the barn. And that was enough for me. That was, that was enough fear for me and enough sorting and pulling out wet stuff and, and all the above that I, I don't, I don't wish that upon anyone. And for anyone that goes through it, my heart just goes out because I didn't lose my kids' pictures. I didn't lose, you know, things that I've held on to my entire life that meant something. I, this is weird. I still have one box of things from when I was a kid. And as I sit here and think about that, I, I don't, you know, it, it's an emotional attachment to thing and I things. And I realize that, but to me, every time that I look at something like that, that, brings out the emotion and the memory and for you not to have that and for others to have to go through that um, and to sit there and sort out and realize that this is, this is it, you, you know, it's ruined and you don't have it anymore. I, I think that's a, a really hard thing to go through. It was. So when I was digging up, trying to find that video, which like I said, was five years ago and uh, just, I mean, I found other videos that I thought that I hadn't seen in a while. And I thought I would share them with you guys. I recorded this one video uh, from a drone view. And so Bailey talks about she said they're at two months, almost two months after their after their natural disaster, Hurricane Fiona. And so I want to show you all how it looked here one month after Hurricane Harvey. And what a big, big difference. I Y'all <laughs> think about what you remember, what you know our place looks like now and look at where we were five years ago. It's been a month now. Things are getting back to normal. The animals that survived her seem to be doing really well. Man. Patty's happy. I'm getting her oatmeal again. Look here, we got a new partner for Meg. Look you there, she Ringo. Had the time losing her siblings. Look how tiny he was. He was the only goat that survived. A baby Ringo. Besides the three that my dad took care of. Didn't even connect. No. As you can see, there's lots of debris. It's been buried. We've had to get a bulldozer and push all kinds of stuff into holes and bury it. So that right there is my yard of all of the things that was buried. It kind of they kind of made a big L shape across my yard. You can see how fitting. <laughs> Jamie, now it's not the time for jokes. How fitting that they buried my stuff in an L shape. 
<laughs> okay. My brother's home was destroyed. We're going to fly the drone the over the entire, the entire property and I'll show my you sister's the house, more. Same thing. You can see so a trailer house there behind the, the house. Something else they're going to have to salvage. So it's hard to tell from right here, but all of this was the old barn area. And so you can still see where they left a lot of the, the hole un, uncovered because I asked them to. I says, could you leave it uncovered because there's still things that I was going through that I knew I was going to have to throw, you know, and have buried. Uh, they actually, you know, they come out and they beat us to it. So we weren't quite all the way ready yet is what I'm saying. So they actually buried so much over through here and they still have, they left me a piece of a hole there so that I could bury the rest of it when I had time to get to it. My nephew had insurance though. It's already been replaced. Now we're flying up towards Uncle My Dan's already got place. Home himself moved in there. He said, nice double wide. The patchy ground there shows where his old house is buried. So I pause it over here. So if you look to what is my left and you see that big round patch of dirt there, that's actually our piece of property. That's where our animals, you know, live and run right now. But that's where my brother's entire home was buried. Um, you know, his house was on blocks and that means it's off the ground by a foot or whatever uh, a cinder block is. And so the floodwaters pushed it across his yard and broke it in half. And so that was so, so they had to bury his entire home. And that was where it was buried right there in the ground. I know everyone can't see the sun and on this particular angle was bad. As it comes back around, I'll show you where my sister Tina's house is buried. Floodwaters have gone down. We still have a little bit of debris and trash we got to pick up here and there. That'll happen over time. But for the most part, the animals are doing well. The grass is nice and green. You ever saw this video? To eat. I think one time. We're blessed. Very blessed. A lot of folks are wondering if after stuff like this happens, if people pack up and move. You know, you take whatever resources you can. You make sure this never happens to you again. You find higher ground. But my family's been here for the last 150 years. This land's been passed down from father to son. So you don't leave. You can't leave. It's in your blood. This is Plum Grove, Texas. There's nowhere else on earth I'd rather be. And so in this picture right over here to the far left, you can see the dirt patch. Uh, that's the pasture where Billy lives right now, Billy and Granny and their baby, along with Sister Kim's goats. And that is my sister Tina's entire house. She also had her house built on cinder blocks. And so she lost the entire thing. And so those are some pretty massive holes. Think about how deep they had to dig those holes in order to bury an ent entire house. And so the, this is going to sound dumb, but it's true. Do you know that when your home, you only move things out of your home, but your home is still salvageable was a whole lot more work oh, than, yeah, I agree. The, yeah. Because when your home is completely destroyed, you don't go inside of it. It's not safe to be inside. Everything is unstable. The flooring and the roofing is all just everywhere. And so you just leave everything where it's at. You don't really walk in and get anything because nothing's any good. So they had really pretty much from the day that they come home and saw their home was destroyed. Uh, the FEMA sent people around to every property and they would do an assessment and write everything up of what they needed. And so to them, it was a real simple total loss, Yeah. total loss. And so they just sent the bulldozer out to bury the entire thing. They had to avoid, you know, obviously they, avo they would avoid septic lines. They would avoid power lines. They would avoid, you know, water lines and all that. But, uh, you know, Plum Grove back in those days was a very different place. But so, Bailey, when I saw your message this morning, I, it brought back a flood of memories. Someone over here in the comments said, I don't want to watch this. This is very depressing. And so I don't add, you don't have to watch, obviously. But to me... I, I almost felt the emotions 
welling up inside of me I until did. one thing happened. I saw my dad's guineas run across the ground. I was wondering if you were going to call it out or not because I saw it too. <laughs> Listen, I, I don't want to, I'm going to show y'all again. I felt. I know it was guineas or goats. And no, it's guineas. All the goats are dead. After stuff like this happens, if people pack up. So and if move, you watch right about over resources. here, I'm coming up behind mom and dad's house. Uh, mom and dad's house was fine. Uh, they did get four feet of water in their home but their home survived. And so it had to be cleaned out. But what I want to show you is over here, do you see the pine tree? Uh, it's kind of out in the middle by itself. By itself. There's, you see where they buried some stuff. You see the hole where they buried stuff by something, there's something big and white. And there's a hole where they buried stuff. You can see that down towards the bottom of the screen. But if you keep watching that area, I don't know why, but I am so drawn to these gosh darn guineas and I felt at this moment, I felt some things welling up inside of me. Until you saw And then it. I saw these guineas running across the yard. And I'm like, mother, ma! I, I almost cursed, Jamie. I almost and cursed. I'm watching this. I'll watch the guineas. You make sure I can't you never see in. you again. You find higher ground. There they go. They well, my family's been around there. 150 years. This man passed down from. Guineas are survivors, <sighs> apparently. Guineas, yeah, well, they can fly. <laughs> they can fly into the trees, and so while everything else is going, to, uh, guineas are alive and well, and just watching all of this unfold, wondering what they're going to be able to, to get into when it's all over, when the water recedes. But um, so there's a lot of people asking where I was during this. I had not met Lester yet during this time. We didn't meet until so that Hurricane Harvey was the end of August, and we didn't meet in person until November. And I think we had been talking for. A month and a half or so at that point in time. Not so. Um, I didn't exist as far as this world goes. Yeah. So Jamie and I met but through some of these videos. Uh, I want to talk about what Mary brought up. This is a this is not part of our my talking points today, but it's a great question. So let me back up one more time oh, this video and I want to show you something. So you don't leave. Okay, right there. Mary says, Where is the new development compared to your property? Okay, so Mary, I know you can't see my mouse, but what you can see in the horizon are trees and lots of them. So my home is right there in almost in the center of the screen. Uh, that's that that's my little place over there with the with the picket fence. It's directly below the W in the Wii video. Yes, but now all of those trees where it says Wii video, all those trees are gone now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and all of that is a of the development oh yes it's just a small part of the development and that was a hurricane harvey is what opened the door for those developers to say hey we can buy up this land right now because it's all been flooded the property values of flood land drops tremendously so these developers swooped in and they bought thousands and thousands and thousands of wooded acreage and so all of those trees are gone now unfortunately but that right there is where there is the new development. What are you going to say, Jamie? That you can't leave it in your blood. I didn't know our story, and they it's asked if Grove, Texas. would we have met if Hurricane Harvey didn't Nowhere else on earth I'd rather be. No. So all of those trees right there, Mary, are the ones that are no longer there. Those, and then all, and you can see as far as the eye can see, and from this perspective, that it just goes, those trees went for miles and miles and miles of just woodland and those are all gone now yeah. you can get on in your vehicle and you can drive down these roads that just they, miles never, and miles. they never end they never end and there's homes and there are, well we've already talked about that let's not make this video about that it wasn't about that in the first place no. uh, it was just mostly the connection that i share with bailey and the fact that what they're going through now brought back a lot of the memories of what we went through back in those days Woo. okay so what's up with you jamie go ahead and talk a little Holy bit moly, I'm, I'm just here listening and you know i i've watched so much change in the short time that i've been around and i know that much of it would not have happened because of her if hurricane harvey didn't happen um and i think that that goes for many disasters in in the country and in people's lives that um, I think there's a phrase that says not all storms um, 
come to destroy and and sometimes it's just to clear your path for you know things in the future and as much destruction as it did i mean it changed my life and I, and i wasn't even hit by hurricane harvey so i i mean i don't know it's really hard to segue into like something after that to talk about anything else oh well i didn't i should have said just till the end you're saying yeah uh so what i'm reading over here while jane was talking uh someone asked did we bury the animals and we weren't able to bury them. What we had to do was consume them with fire. Uh, we had to build, um, we had to build mounds. We just had a very large mound of all that we had lost. And um, we had to, what's the word when you? Cremate. Cremate, we cremated all the animals. And there was a combination of horses and cows and lots of goats, lots and lots of goats um uh, obviously just donkeys and it was just it was a hor horrific and um uh, of course me being the guy that i am i videoed and i photographed all of those things that's stuff that i won't show here because that would for sure get us in hot water with with a lot of people but yeah all of that stuff guys was was a the aftermath of going through a, a natural disaster and like jamie said a while ago this is not, I mean, this, this may be my story, but a lot of you guys here I was reading have been through, like Jamie said, tornadoes, blizzards, her, uh, earthquakes, and you're fires. just in your yeah. fires and you're listing all of the things that have, have been just as devastating. And so that's a part of your story. And those things that have happened to you, they have shaped you. They can sometimes leave you in a better place in some ways. But I think that they leave us all in a really bad place in other ways. It's a, it was a traumatic situation when you go through that, and it's hard to overcome it, especially when your mind can't grasp the enormity of what just happened. And so in our situation, one day everything is fine. Everything is great. Everything is going well. And then a week later, everything is gone, and it's like it was snatched from you. And so I don't want to focus on that. I always say that I'm blessed that my children are safe because people lose their lives. People, a lot of people, you know, lose their lives in things like that. And so my kids were safe and my parents were safe. My siblings were all safe. Yes. Did they lose their homes? Yes. Did they have a really hard time getting everything back and back on their feet? Absolutely. Uh, did it change a lot of the family dynamics around here and around, I'm sure, all families? Yes. Did it, I don't want to say did it ruin friendships because in my situation, it opened my eyes to the difference between a friend and an acquaintance. And I've talked about that before that I spent the last 15 years of my life hanging out, doing all the things that friends do just to find out that when I had nothing to offer, I had nothing to offer. All of a sudden, those that I'd been calling friends for all of these years were nowhere to be found. <laughs> nowhere to be found. I couldn't. Uh, yeah. And so I realized right then that, wow, I feel, talk about betrayal. I think that's kind of a form of betrayal because you confided in these guys. You, you know, you you shared your time with them you gave them the greatest gift and i i always say that that it's your time and when you find that you all of a sudden see it from a different perspective and you're like wait a minute i've been i've been doing all of these things and they actually have never and then it's a it's a harsh you know kind of reality to to come to to terms with uh i like what chris says chris is sweet um but you know even though i'm not trying to boast or brag it really has changed me for the better though jamie i've often said that folks who knew me before hurricane harvey would have saw a very different guy they would have saw a guy that was walking around like on top of the world a guy that was teacher of the year for my school district a guy that had won district championships with my football team and you know you sit there and you think about all the things that you've accomplished and done and then, you know what the Bible says about pride cometh before the fall? Have you ever heard about that? Only out of your mouth. <laughs> I'm going to type it in here. Pride cometh before the fall. 
I may have typed that in wrong because put something. Oh, Jamie, where's it at? Pride cometh before the fall. <laughs> I know that God did not send Hurricane Harvey to teach Lester a lesson. I, th that's not why God sent Hurricane Harvey and, and created the worst natural disaster the U.S. Has ever, has ever undergone to teach me a lesson. But I think that a lot of people in natural disasters or even in real life from day to day life, when they lose someone they're close to, when they find themselves medically, you know, sick and they find themselves very vulnerable and it does change you. So maybe Hurricane Harvey and all that happened changed me and opened my eyes to to become a better person, just a better human. Because I'll tell you this, and I've said this before a few times, that after Hurricane Harvey, I became the best teacher that I ever was in all of the years before, because I was the teacher that finally had a little bit of empathy for these kids, realizing that even though I had undergone a natural disaster and that I had was undergoing what I would call my rock bottom, a lot of these kids in your classroom we're all going through their own versions of rock bottom. And it may not have been Hurricane Harvey necessarily, but it forms of abuse. So many kids are just hungry. They're neglected. They're, they're suffering at home and from, you know, and so many things that these kids go through. And so no longer was I the guy that come to class and say, hey, wake up, uh, -uh. head off the tech, get up. Everyone stand up, stand up, sit up, straighten your chair. You know, instead I was the guy that realized that a lot of these kids in my classroom are going through bullying issues and you just name it. And so it kind of helped me become a whole lot more empathetic to the kids. And, and then ultimately it introduced me to so many people here uh, because like I've always said, as like, as you look around and all of your relationships are all crumbling because everyone is at a place where, you know, you don't have a lot to offer. And it was total strangers that came in and began to support and encourage and build me up and kind of helped me take one step forward and each day get up and push a little bit more and a little bit more. And now, hey, here we are today. And so if we if it's true that we're able to do things to give back, then I am completely indebted. Is that the right word? Indebted mm -hmm. to all of those total strangers that were more friends to me than ever than I've ever had in real life. So anyway, we got to stop talking about all this because I am finding myself getting down. Look at my shoulder slumping. Look how, I know. Look how I'm slowly begin, beginning to wither away as a man. I started the, I started this. <laughs> I started off nice and proud. And now look, I'm seeing a lot of comments that I want to read. I can't tell you what they're saying. Oh, oh no. That's a spammer. Yeah. Out of all the things for you to pick. Jamie, I want to block and delete this You have to hit guy. hide first. Hide first. Now you have to go up to the button. All right. So, hey, man, if you're really a man, <laughs> I want to say that you are a complete creep. <laughs> and how dare you? Of all the comments for you to click on, that's the one. Yeah. Joseph Christian. Guys, don't even don't. So this is for everybody who doesn't know how spamming works. Okay. That's what spammers do. They get a fake picture of it. it looks like a well. It looks like a very distinguished it's always, gentleman. It's always a distinguished gentleman. Trust me. Yeah, it, it's a very distinguished gentleman. And what he does is looks around for who he considers a prey or a Isn't target. It's kind of funny that the spammers choose to be handsome men instead of women. Doesn't that say a lot about what they know about us? So here's what, here's what I think they find a target of saying hey here is a 40 to 60 year old woman who probably doesn't get told how pretty she is like she used to she probably doesn't get built up at home as much as she used to she probably is kind of going through her own self-esteem issues of i used to be young and now i'm getting older the way I, that's the way i feel about myself i used to be this and so if someone comes by and starts building you up and building you up and so all of a sudden whoever he was trying to target right there He's trying to say to her, hey, I watch, I've seen you a few times on here and you have a great smile and I can just see you have this great personality. Why don't you? So they're hoping that their subject is vulnerable enough to not realize that they 
said the same comment on 40 other posts. And what's so dumb is anyone who, if you receive one of those, if you just keep scrolling down, you'll see that the same hacker or spammer who's probably in some shop somewhere who does this for a living, it's not that guy. He's copied that guy's photo and he's saying the exact same thing to every woman down the page. They probably have a quota. I bet you their boss says that you have to go out there and do this to 500 people a day. And so they go, they find a page like ours who caters to mostly between the ages of 30 and 60 or whatever the age group is. And they're like, here's, we're going to hit this page hard today. Let's hit this page. And so guys don't ever believe stuff like that. Please don't ever believe anything like that. Um, and you're saying, well, you I'm, met Jamie. I'm only know. laughing because I think you said something similar to my to my pictures or comment or something. And at some point, I'm I'm laughing a little bit because you might have pulled out the. Never mind. Yeah, you might. <laughs> let's just get off that subject real fast, real fast. OK. All right. So State of the Union. We've talked about Hurricane Harvey for long enough. Let's go to the State of the Union. How's everything going around here? Things are good. What's happening in the life of Jamie? Work, home. I'm like, I was gone and missed Time Out Tuesday, which apparently lasted for three and a half hours. Uh, I will be here for this Time Out Tuesday, so I'll be back. Um, the other stuff that's going on is the sun is finally out today, which feels like it's been two weeks since that happened. Uh, that's a, it's a little extreme. It's not been two weeks, but, you know, cold, nasty weather uh, is not wanted always here jamie has an entire story to talk about with this one over here about your boss and the ostrich egg you want to save that for time out tuesday i'm going to save that for time out oh, tuesday all right. i will just say that jamie i almost said went from zero to hero with that with that <laughs> gift i'm not saying that jamie is a zero in her boss's eyes but i will say that and i'm not going to ruin her time out tuesday but jamie with that egg found herself at the center of attention. Which was also not the goal, <laughs> by the way. It was not the goal. Excuse me. But yeah, we'll talk about it on Time Out Tuesday. Let me hide that. And so what's going on with Jamie as far as her Longhorn Luster and I'm a Survivor Garden? Man, why, why are we making this all about Jamie right now? I feel like I rambled the first 30 minutes oh. of this about Luster and the hurricane. Well, we survived two frost so far and both gardens did. Um, I am still having significant peacock issues here. I did go to the porch before we started this live and saw that someone sent me some reflective banner stuff. Um, so hopefully Lester will have time to help me set that up and keep them out because I can't believe I'm about to say this, but the dang peacocks are eating my onions. Why? Why did I have to eat every, like they've eaten everything else green and now they're like, oh, what about this? Let's try this too. So my onions have like a buzz cut across the bottom and I just like, can't they find it? I mean, we feed them a lot. There's literally ryegrass growing everywhere. I don't understand why they can't stay out of the garden. They are my nemesis. Peacocks to me are guineas to Lester. That's a sweet compliment right there from Denise. Uh, another lady, Wendy. I have no idea when they target me. I'm streetwise. I'm used to men Ooh, photos. She's been getting but women's lately, photos. I've been getting women's photos. Are they trying to tell me something? <laughs> <laughs> she giggles at the end of it. Is that your LOL? Uh, well, today uh, it changes. Um, so, Wendy, I don't know why they choose to target you. Uh, I, I'm afraid that if you ever invite or allow one into your friends list, then all of a sudden they begin to, they know, they, they, know, they, they know. know, they know you can. And so you probably didn't even realize it. You probably thought it was someone that seemed legit has, he has a couple of nice looking photos. So I'll let them in. And then they, they grow My dad got into all kinds of trouble when he first started social media, you know, he's an older gentleman and my dad didn't realize all of the dangers of this, of spam and all the way that people go about hacking and, and stuff. So I, I just realized something based me. on what someone said. Yeah. Do you think 
that Jason at Coghill was like, Jamie's growing a garden. Jamie's going to have fruit trees and now we're going to compete. And do you think he was like, take these peacocks, these beautiful peacocks as gifts of, and, and grow. And, and by the way, they're going to eat all your garden. You so <laughs> you think that Jason was trying to sabotage <laughs> us with those peacocks? I don't know. That's, so here's my question though. I think that their peacocks run free as well, don't they? And so do they also eat at Jason's garden? And if so, I haven't seen any videos of that where the peacocks are driving them crazy and they want them peacocks out of there. No, I don't, I don't know. I'm going to have to go pay more attention because now I'm sitting here thinking, I'm like, I, I don't know. I don't know either. But they are beautiful. And, and we are just teasing. They're, we're really blessed that they are male and female, which is crazy that that random selection happened. And Jack has the most beautiful feathers that uh, are turning colors around his neck, but are also now he's growing his tail. And I can't wait to see how he's going to fluff up uh, in the spring. I think if you put the reflective tape, the the streamers like she talked about and uh, maybe some of those things that spin around and around and around what do you call those yeah somebody Little sent wind, some of those wind things yeah i have a, a whole uh stuff on the porch that you're gonna have to help me with yeah yeah um okay well i would agree with this person who says that only accept people and your friends that you actually know that's true and i would agree with that too if you actually know them those are the only people who you need in your friends list Hey, you remember that show we watched about that football player who like dated somebody yeah. online for two years? And yes, then... Ty. Uh, no, uh, come on, guys. Who's this football player? Who was the, who was the football player? He was from Hawaii. He went to Notre Dame. He went to Notre Dame and he was catfished, which means for two years he had an ongoing what he thought was an online relationship. Tao. Tao. Uh, yeah. Come on. What's his name? Someone Te -te -teo? Monte. Monte Teo. Teo. Yeah, somebody said it. So if you never, I didn't know anything about this in real life. Lester apparently knew about it when it was really happening. But this guy dated this woman, woman, for two years online, never FaceTimed, even though that was capable, never met in person, had spoken to her family members, which turned out to be her acting as her family members. Yeah. And um, it ended up being a transgender man. But it was a former classmate. Yeah. Who was a it was a it was a guy who found him to be attractive. The 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 male obviously was going through some other things with his identity and wanted to become a woman, and at that point reached out as a woman using fake pictures to this football player ended up convincing him that she was this beautiful girl who lives so-and-so and so they had a thing for two years just simply online never met and then looking back all of his friends all of his family were saying how weird that you've never met her and all you had to go on are all of her pictures on facebook but guys anybody can copy and yeah. create any picture on facebook so what happened was this this uh, catfisher they call them she went by and found a really gorgeous girl and just copied all of her yeah. pictures and built her very own page using all of those pictures and it was every time that this the real girl would go out somewhere and go in the town then she'd copy the picture put it on her page and say last night had a blast wish you were here to her boyfriend and so yeah they were that went on for two years before he finally realized that he had been set up that's just I, I only bring that up to say of how extreme and how far things can go and and accepting people that you know is really important because everything in our lives is connected now on our phones or computers and credit cards banking information all this other stuff and true hackers true true people that do this for a living scammers can get into all of that in your life and it's very dangerous and and just just have your guard up and and keep it to people that you know um because it can it can ruin many things yeah that's true all right well guys jamie if you're done are you done i'm done actually i i, I was hoping to do it in daylight to hopefully get some of that stuff up with you so i'm gonna put you to okay. work we have jobs to do 
it was a pleasure hanging out with you all. Thank you all for loving it and accepting us, uh, allowing us into your homes and into your phones. Did I get it right? You did. That's Jamie's thing, and I've kind of just taken it over. No one is shocked. No uh, one is shocked. Keep Bailey and her family and many others who have gone through so many things and, and are still going through so many things. Um, you know, one thing I always say is we never know what other people are, are going through and trying to overcome, so just be kind. And that's been a message of ours for a really long time. And it's just a, a reminder to just be kind. All right. We'll end it on that. Thank you, guys. Bye, y'all. Have a blessed day.